In this screencast, we're going to be talking about how to create a new example to show up on whileuylibrary.com from a starting from a JS fiddle. This is a fiddle that was contributed by community member Todd Smith to show off some of the new features in the 350 data table architecture. The two things that we need to have in our environment all set up before we get started are a local clone of your fork of the YUI3 GitHub repository and Selic, which is the, <clears throat> the tool that we use to generate our documentation from mustache files, or rather from handlebars files. And the setup is pretty straightforward. For your YUI3 fork, if you aren't forked, then this button will show fork, and the instructions are pretty straightforward. But jump over to your fork after you've got that set up. Make sure that you're grabbing the read-write access uh, URL. And in your terminal, git clone, and then the URL. And that I did that ahead of time because it takes a couple minutes to do. But as a result of that, you should have um, a YUI3 directory. And that has the built files and the source files for all of the for all of the, the library. And the documentation is held in the source directory under the components subdirectory. So in our case, source data table. And you'll see that there is a docs directory in there. And this has the mustache files that we use to generate the user guide. The index.mustache file is the is the user guide and then all of the individual examples as well. So the first thing, if you're just getting your fork set up, your local clone set up, is you want to get uh, remote add upstream, and the upstream remote is going to correspond to the YUI version, so the original version, you want to make sure that you're grabbing the get read-only version of that. And now, um, now let's get on to Selic. Selic is on github.com slash rgrove slash Selic. And it has a nice user guide here. It tells you about how to install it, what its features are, how to use it. So it's a pretty straightforward install using NPM. And so uh, since we're installing it globally, you'll want to do a sudo uh, npm install dash g selic and it should only take a couple of seconds and now that that's set up here we are in the project root in the yui3 repo root we'll use the command line selic and we're going to launch this in server mode and we're going to pass it port 4000. The default is 3000. I just happen to have something else going on on port 3000 right now. So now let's go and check on your local host 4000 and this is what you should see. This is the intro page for the local uh, locally run Selic server for the project. And you can go into any of the user guides. In this case we're going to be working with data tables. So this is the user guide for data table. This should look familiar and all of the examples are listed over there. We're going to be adding one there. So we can uh, stop that now and we have Selic and the our local repository all set up. Now our environment is set up so now let's get started building that example. The first thing that you want to do when you are creating a new example is you want to make sure that you're going to be working on a topic branch but you also want to be make sure that you're working from the latest tip of head before we even go in, before we even branch into our uh, topic branch. So git pull upstream master. I'm already up to date, so that's good. Now let's say git checkout dash b. We're going to do this on a topic branch, new example. Right, so now I'm on a new branch. So let's go ahead and edit these files now. We'll add a folder here and so here we are in the data table docs directory. We'll add the data table docs directory and here again we see that component.json file 
and all of the example mustache files. We'll start with the component.json file. This is the metadata about the component, and it includes all of the examples listed in an array of objects. So you want to create a new example. First step, add to the component.json file. Just copy and paste one that's already there. Change some names. You're good to go. So this one happens to be about the record type, so we'll do that. And this is the display name that shows up in the right-hand column, so we'll say sortable generated columns. Cool. And the modules correspond to the, the, mod, the modules that are used in the example. Uh, so this example will show up on uh, linked on the side of those pages as well. So this one happens to use data type as well. And finally the description. In this case we'll say using data tables record type attribute to create sortable columns. Good. And this here you don't have to worry too much about. Um, and let's save that one off back in here and let's launch that select server again select server now if we look at the same page sortable generated columns is now showing up on the right hand side and that's of course going to link to a 404 because it's not there yet let's fix that uh, <clears throat> so we'll just copy an existing one here and uh, a new file, we'll dump that in. Now back in the component.json file, you'll notice that I changed the, the name to data table record type. The name corresponds to the name of the mustache file that, it, that it's going to look for in that docs directory. So that means our new example file that is named data table record type has to be saved as in the docs directory as data table record type. Okay, now if we go back here, and there we are, look at that. It's just pulling over that, the other example, because we just copied and pasted it. But it found the file, so it's rendering that file out. So now let's go ahead and make this our own. And let's look at the structure of this real quick. Starts with some, it's just an HTML file with the dot mustache extension, so we can actually change the syntax of this to HTML. Good. Now you'll see that there's a div intro and a div example. And the example div often has the YUI3 skin SAM applied to it as well, so that the SAM skin is going to apply to the the contents that generated inside. Uh, down below that div you'll see just a bunch of content, and the, all of this content corresponds to just the, the description of the example, all of that copy that's below the working example. This is pretty freeform stuff here. So what we've done here is, this is a reference to a, a, a mustache um, partial, uh, partial by the name of data table nested calls source. And you'll find those in your partials directory, data table nested calls source, you see that? And so we're going to be dealing with partials. You see that referenced again down here at the bottom in between these triple backticks. And the triple backticks create a code um, uh, syntax highlighted code block so you can actually see it on the page. So this down here is what appears in those triple backticks. And this allows you to take the same code that's powering the example and display it in a syntax highlighted format so that there doesn't, you don't create a disconnect between the, the code that's shown and the code that's actually working on the page. So let's uh, let's change the intro text here to let's see, so copy it here. There we go. All right, and then let's change the name of this since the fiddle is in three parts. We'll create three partials, record type HTML, create 
create one for the JavaScript, one for the CSS, and one for the HTML. There we go. And we'll change that now. Now this is going to expect three partials by those names. So let's save that off and we'll now go back into our fiddle. We'll get the three pieces out of their respective sections. We'll create a new file, dump that in, and save it. We're going to be saving this as a partial. And we're going to name it like we had referenced it. Record type. This was HTML. Back in our fiddle. We'll grab the CSS next. And we'll save that. Partial record type CSS. And finally, the JavaScript. And we'll create a new partial there. Now, let's see how we've done. Look at that. That is the example. Now we just need to update that copy down below, and we have ourselves a working example. So, let's go back into the example here. I'm going to copy this out here. And there. So you can see I'm referencing the individual partials from inside of these triple backticks here. So let's save that off. We'll take one last look. And that looks like an example to me. So next step, after testing, all of, uh, testing this example in all the various browsers, we can check now on our git status. And it shows the component.json file was modified, and then we have these new files here. So let's just git add source data table. Okay. Here we are. They're showing queued. Git commit new example for record type. And then all we have to do is push it up to our origin. This is to our GitHub fork and we'll name it new example or something to that effect. Now it's pushed out to our GitHub repository. So let's see here. Go back into my fork and we'll take a look at our available branches. I'll have to refresh that page, I guess. New example. Take a look at that. And then the last step, that big pull request button right there on the top. New example for record type. It's requesting that. And send pull request. And we are done.